Should I be concerned that I was able to pull 20 medieval history books off my shelves that I still haven't read yet? Nah. Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here and thank you so much for watching. In this video, we're going to be going over 20 medieval Middle Ages history books, a uh, couple of kind of medieval philosophy books and that sort of thing thrown in there as well. Um, this is kind of partially for the second quarter of Historathon. Um, it's being run over, uh, it's a reading event run by a several really lovely hosts. I'll leave some of their links down below. Um, and quarter two is what April through June and it's all about five from the year roughly 500 to 1500 so pretty much the Middle Ages and whatnot but yeah I just figured I'd go over some of my Middle Ages books that I haven't read yet because I couldn't think of anything to read in yeah I realize I still have a lot on my shelves that I could just get to so these are some I just pulled off the shelves that I need to get to and yeah let's just uh, go ahead and get started all right so we got a couple of Fuller Society titles that I haven't read yet this first one is from the history of England set which I think is like a 12 volume set um, and I only have this one because I don't really care about a lot of the other ones um, but what we got here is Anglo-Saxon England this is by Peter Blair who's uh, pretty well known and like I said I haven't read it yet and it's all about the Anglo-Saxons I've only read a couple um, I've read one on like it was it was supposed to be like Anglo-Saxon warfare it seems like pretty much anything I've ever read on the Anglo-Saxons is like just kind of like their dealings with the Norse or the Vikings, the Great Heathen Army, something like that, or 1066. So I feel like I need kind of a comprehensive overview of the Anglo-Saxons and whatnot. But uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't read this one. I have seen Peter Blair's stuff. I think he's written stuff on like Roman Britain, I almost want to say, but I, I could be just blowing smoke there. But uh, anyways, like I said, uh, it's a full society book. I don't even remember getting it, but yeah, let's get to it. Uh, next up, we got two books by Eileen Powers. Now, these are probably similar, I'm hoping, to Joseph and Francis Guy's uh, Life in a Medieval series. Like, there's Life in a Medieval Village, City, and Castle. Um, this one is Medieval People, and the next one's going to be Medieval Women. Um, I just love the colors here, kind of like on those, uh, kind of like manuscript kind of pages sort of thing kind of going on. Um, I'm hoping these are just really good social histories in kind of the same vein. I feel like medieval history does really good with social histories. You know, like the day in the life of like, you know, just like regular people or living in, you know, a medieval town and what was it like for all the different like guild workers, all that kind of stuff. Um, I just feel like they do uh, really good. And I've heard good things about Island Paris, oh, a little bit older um, historian and whatnot. But like I said, really hoping that these ones pan out as well. And just for a... Uh, cover here for medieval women got that one like on the loom and stuff so there you go so hopefully one of these works out really really good uh i think life in a medieval city by joseph excuse me joseph and francis is probably my favorite social history work of all time but yeah let me know down below as we're going through all these i'm going to try to go through them kind of quickly <laughs> otherwise we're going to be here for like 10 years i feel so um yeah i'm going to kind of try to cruise through some of them and yeah, just let me know which one either you find the most interesting or what you think I should read uh, during these next uh, couple of months. All right, so next up, we got two books uh, that I have been sent by the publishers uh, quite some time ago, so I need to get to them. Uh, these are uh, the only two I have uh, from publishers uh, on medieval history. But first, we've got Living by the Sword by Kristen Neuschel. Weapons and Material Culture in France and Britain, 600 to 1600. Um, I thought this was just really cool. It sounds like a good social history, kind of like a history of artifacts. Um, I'm assuming it's going to use a lot of archaeology and that sort of thing, kind of going through records of like, uh, I'm assuming like uh, when uh, people do uh, like the census and uh, death deeds and all the inheritances and all that stuff, they kind of log all the different things people own and they go on to the next person and whatnot. So I'm kind of hoping this is sort of like that, but uh, for, you know, kind of like an emphasis on like weapons and armor and stuff, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so let's go with that. And then next up, we have Medieval Maritime Warfare by Charles Stanton. And I asked for this one because I've never actually read a medieval warfare book focusing on the naval stuff. Um, yeah, it does seem like in the dark age, like I can't even think of like any like major naval, there's like the one Norse, uh, engagement uh between norway and denmark if i remember correctly but other than that i can't really remember a whole lot of like naval warfare battles going on 
Um, but yeah, if you have other recommendations kind of on this topic, leave a comment down below as well. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to this one just because like I said, this feels kind of like a gap in my knowledge I need to fill in. So hopefully it does that for sure. Uh, and then next up we got, I got four of my Oxford very short introductions here. Um, for those who have followed the channel for a while, I always kind of like promote these like little things, <laughs> little guys. Um, I've read quite a few of them and I kind of vaguely try to read like one a month for like the past couple of years now. So I, I have a stack of red ones and a stack of ones that I haven't read yet. So I went through the ones I obviously haven't read and these are the four that were kind of vaguely on, well, I say vaguely on the Middle Ages. This first one here uh, by Miri Rubin is the Middle Ages, a very short introduction. Um, and like I said, I like to branch out and just kind of read different topics on, you know, they got history, science, philosophy, linguistics, are all kinds of just literature everything you can like think of practically i think there's like eight or nine hundred titles now uh but we got the middle ages by mary rubin uh we got the crusades by christopher tyerman um and the uh, discord group for the historathon uh crusades like come up quite a bit for what other people are reading i'm not a huge fan of the crusades per se like just like learning about i don't know it just it doesn't do it for me like a lot of uh i guess it's just a topic i'll know a lot of other people like enjoy learning about and stuff but um, i do have one other crusade book but i'm going to talk about a little bit more because it's a little it's a little bit different um but yeah so there's the crusades we've got magna carta by nicholas vincent I'm kind of looking forward to this one because there was like a debate in the discord chat too about uh magna carta uh whether if it was really that important or not um like I was kind of on the side of, uh, you know, it, it was more like a peace treaty at the time. And then everyone just kind of forgot about it for several hundred years. And it's kind of just sort of blown up in the past, like, century or two as kind of like, you know, this outstanding human rights document when it, I don't really feel that it is. But maybe this book will start to clarify that um, and actually maybe even lead me in the right direction through like other sources on, in the back and whatnot as well. And then we got Late Antiquity here by Gillian Clark. And I think I actually did read this. This was like either the first or second one that I had ever read. But it's been so long. Um, I kind of, Late Antiquity is a period. Um, it's roughly, I think most people kind of put it from like Diocletian around like 380 to um, roughly around Charlemagne. Kind of the Carolingian Empire around you know, the 700s and 800s. Uh, kind of era, uh, but it's just a time period that I really like, you know, basically the Dark Ages and stuff. So yeah, I kind of want to do a reread and see, like, I think this was basically, this one and uh, the one on the Roman Republic uh, kind of got me into the series as a whole. So I kind of want to do a reread because I've, like I said, it's been forever and ever and ever and just want to see if it really was, like, good enough for me to kind of go down that rabbit hole. Um, if you've been watching me so far with all these kind of random medieval history books and stuff, uh, I just want to pre appreciate you guys for taking the time out of your day. Um, if you do want to support the channel in any way, um, a great way to do is actually through my Etsy shop where I sell signs and things. Kind of like I don't have a whole lot of medieval ones. I got a lot of like Latin ones, a lot of philosophy, nature ones, and stuff. But I do have a bunch by like the from the Icelandic Norse sagas and stuff. And this one I think is my second or third best-selling sign in the catalog and whatnot. But yeah, a lot of people really enjoy it. And if you could just go in and like a few items and favorite the shop and all that kind of stuff, that really helps. A lot. All right, so let's move on to the next two. Um, I got a bunch of titles here in these Osprey uh, publishing books. For those who know what those are, there's a whole bunch of different series. Like for example, this one's from the Warrior series. We got English Longbowmen, 1330 to 1515, and then we also have Knights at Tournament by Christopher Gravitt. Uh, this this one's actually really really old. Uh, and as you can see, eight color plates by Angus McBride and color plates by Gary Embleton on this one. What's really cool about these series is uh, they're really into you having super accurate um, like arms and armor and heraldry, all that kind of stuff, equipment that people were using. Some of them are kind of like medieval, we have ancient ones, and a lot of them are kind of like modern military stuff kind of going on. But yeah, let me just show you, uh, for those who don't know what's in here, um, you have a lot of illustrations and diagrams, photographs, a lot of times like different archaeological things in there, a lot of historical information, and then a, a bibliography, but every book has... In the middle here really cool full color commissioned like illustrated plates uh, with about as accurate arms and armor heraldry all that kind of stuff um, that we can know based on like archaeological and textual evidence and source material that has come down to us which is really popular for people that just are interested in this sort of thing maybe people that like historical war games uh, and miniatures stuff like that i just find it really interesting 
um, just to like kind of get a good view of what people actually like, you know, look like and what they were wearing and how the armor actually like kind of looked and whatnot. Uh, just because we do get kind of like a distorted picture of everything, I think, um, from like, you know, film, media, and, and whatnot. But yeah, so that one was Knights at Tournament. This one's the English Longbowman. I thought these were just kind of cool uh, titles, some of them. I have a few medieval ones in the collection, but these were the two that really stood out to me this time. Kind of going through it, so yeah. Just thought that looked pretty cool. All right, now let's go on to some more regular-ish books. Uh, we got The Fourth Crusade and the Sack of Constantinople by Jonathan Phillips. And this is the other crusade book I was telling you about. Um, the reason I'm interested in The Fourth Crusade is on a little tangent here. Uh, you know, everyone always you know, talks about the first one and the third one, sometimes the second one. The Fourth Crusade was the most ridiculous, like, endeavor ever. Um, you know, uh, the Crusaders all kind of, you know, form and muster in Italy and whatnot. Um, and the Venetians agree to sail them over under the condition they, like, take a city for them over in, like, Hungary, who also was, like, where the King of Hungary was, um, I had also taken up the cross to go on crusade. You know, obviously that's kind of awkward where the first step is you're just, like, sacking a Christian city if you're a, you know... A holy crusader and whatnot yeah it gets excommunicated you know they get excommunicated for doing such a dumb thing and everything but anyways they kind of find a way around it and then they just basically go and fight constantinople and this is actually one of the big events where Const uh Byzant Byzant the byzantine empire was already kind of like on the downward trajectory there but this really was <laughs> almost not i won't wasn't the final nail in the coffin but this was you know when that broke the door the floodgates open for that um just a really totally ridiculous like i said just military campaign all around but there are some really interesting characters most notably from what i've read and stuff uh the doge which is kind of like the leader of venice uh enrico dandolo who's like i think he was like 91 or something like that during the fourth crusade blind and everything and joins like like kind of uses himself as kind of like a standard to kind of like the rally the men and stuff by ordering himself to be like uh um set up on the beach and everything even though he can't fight well, when they weren't able to like take a tower and whatnot but anyways like i said this one it's kind of it's a little bit different from like the normal crusade stuff you read about so uh, i'm interested to kind of get like a full comprehensive picture on that uh, then we got Feudalism here by F. L. Ganshoff, and this is an older, pretty famous academic work, and I think it's supposed to be the counter to Mark Bloch's Feudalism, or Feudal Society, uh, for those who are like kind of like medieval scholars and whatnot. This is one that kind of gets brought up a lot, and it's supposed to kind of contrast with Mark Bloch's view, so uh, I'm kind of interested in reading it. It's not very long, so even though it's kind of more like scholarly and whatnot, I think I'll be able to uh, read it pretty quickly and kind of see what it's all about. Next up, we got Medieval Siege and Siegecraft by Joffrey Hindley. Um, this was a gift given to me by a friend a long time ago, and I haven't read it yet, so I felt shamed, and I just figured I'd go ahead and go read it for sure. Uh, Medieval Siege is, you know, like kind of, you know, def castle defenses and stuff. Really popular kind of like topics in medieval history and everything. Uh, the siege artillery, you know, with catapults and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just think it's going to be interesting to learn about kind of the ins and outs and what's real and what's myth and what's fact and everything kind of like along those lines next up we got great the great rising of 1381 alistair or by alistair dunn i don't know why i was, I thought that was the subtitle for a second um i'm really interested in the peasants revolt i got like five or six books on it um summer of blood by dan jones is really good as well for kind of like an intro popular history on that topic but um i just really love you know the people of England just had enough of all this like kind of just nonsense and everything uh kind of going on especially with like extra taxes and everything and you know they actually go out to London and do a pretty good job sacking the city for a little while and whatnot but like I said it's just another book on it and I kind of want to read it because I like that topic all right then we got two books on barbarians here so this is kind of going back to the dark ages of what now we got barbarians to angels of the dark ages revisited by peter s wells and this is all about i'm assuming the conversion of a lot of the you know quote unquote barbarian tribes uh to christianity during kind of the, the later uh roman empire and whatnot um and then going on beyond that uh kind of the 
the dividing sects of Christianity, uh, where you have like a lot of Aryan Christians and whatnot with some of the Goths and things like that. So I think it's going to be kind of all about that. It's just like I said, it's kind of late antiquity. It's just a really cool time period for me. There's just a lot going on, but we don't always have like the source material to kind of go with it. And then kind of similar here, we got the Barbarian West 400 to 1000 by J.M. Wallace Hadrill. And this is also supposed to be a classic kind of on this topic. And this is obviously going to be all about kind of those same kind of tribes of the different Gothic tribes, you know, the Merovingians, uh, the Franks, the Merovingians turning into kind of a Carolingian uh, empire in a little bit, uh, you know, probably the Langobards, uh, all that, and the Lombardy and everything like that. So yeah, just, I don't know. I really like the barbarian, you know, quote unquote barbarians. Um, even if they, I, like I said, you kind of always have the barbarians at the gate vibe going on, um, but it's kind of nice to learn like the actual facts of the matter and whatnot. But um, a lot of them were actually had just a really cool like niche cultures and stuff. And I just really enjoy that sort of thing. Uh, next up, we got three sort of intellectual histories. I'm trying to vaguely get back, getting back into reading philosophy. I don't know how well it's going to go, but I found a three on medieval philosophy. Even when I studied it in college a little bit, um, I, all I remember is the Hellenistic Greek stuff and then like modern stuff. I don't remember learning anything about any of the medieval stuff kind of going on, but we got philosophy and civilization in the Middle Ages by D. Wolf. That, <laughs> so like I said, I don't know anything about this one. I don't know where I got it. Don't have uh, Maurice De Wolf is going to be his first name there. Uh, but I just kind of went through like the table of contents when I was perusing some of my books. But yeah, it just kind of looks like a nice intellectual history, not necessarily just philosophy per se, uh, but kind of just all the different kind of cultural things going on. So I think that'll be kind of a good overview. Uh, and then we have uh, humanism, medieval humanism and other studies. And this is by HM, I think it's HM Southern, if I remember correctly, RW Southern. Um, who wrote, what did he write, The Making of the Middle Ages or The High Middle Ages or something that was like a classic in the mid-1900s. Um, well, this is all about medieval humanism, which is kind of a, I don't want to say it's not a philosophical school per se, but it's towards the high and late Middle Ages. It is sort of like kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't, I guess I don't have a good way to describe it because I've only like vaguely heard of it, uh, but it's kind of just a, I don't, like I said, I don't want to say style, but I don't know. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why I need to read this book. And then lastly, I have uh, Frederick Copleston's like entire history of philosophy, except like one title out of the 14, I want to say. And I haven't read any of them because they're on the bottom shelf in the corner down there. But we've got History of Philosophy. This is Volume 2, Part 1, Medieval Philosophy from Augustine to Bonaventure. And this is definitely more of like kind of a deep dive of kind of just a chronicle chronological history of thought, history of philosoph philosophical thought, uh, obviously going from about, you know, roughly uh, 400 there to, uh, of Augustine to Bonaventure. So uh, it's broken into two parts. Uh, I assume the other one kind of focused more on uh, Aquinas and whatnot. And like I said, this one's just definitely more of a deep dive. There's chapters on pretty much all the major thinkers and whatnot. But I remember when I picked this up in a used bookstore, I got the entire series for like a dollar each. So that was really cool. And I think it was only missing one or two you know even back then when it was published like in the 60s it was actually i think i want to say it started in the 40s this edition was in the 60s but dollar 25 so you know inflation <laughs> didn't hit that used bookstore yet uh but like i said um it's just kind of a grand overview and if i like this one i might as well start reading some of the other ones as well so there you have it there's 20 books on medieval history and medieval thought and all that kind of stuff let me know like i said which one <laughs> sounds most interesting to you we've got a whole variety of whatnot going on in there but thank you so much for watching if you made this far you might as well like actually if you think these books suck give it a dislike and let me know why but uh if whatever you're reading whether it's medieval history or not always remember read victoriously